welcome back. Um, I'm now answering question number two on Mr. Hassan's math channel of the International A-Level Mechanics M1 October 2019 paper from Edexcel. It says a small ball is released from rest from a point that is 40 meters above horizontal ground. The ball bounces on the ground and rebounds vertically. Each time the ball bounces on the ground, the speed of the ball is instantaneously reduced by 50%. The ball is modeled as a particle moving freely under gravity um, from the instant when it is released until it first hits the ground and between each successive bounce. Find the time from the instant when the ball is released from rest to the instant when it hits the ground for the second time. Okay, so basically here we've got the situation where a ball is released from a height of 40 meters above the ground. So let's say this is the ground here and it's released from a height of 40 meters above the ground. Okay, so it's released from this height. Okay, so the first situation here, it, it falls down to the ground. Okay, and then it bounces up. Okay, it bounces up, so it comes down, and then it bounces up vertically. I'm just going to draw it on the side so we can see. And it goes back up again, and then it hits the ground again. It bounces, and then it hits the ground again. Okay, so let's call this first position O, the origin, where it started from. And let's call this point 1, where it bounced first, and 2, where it hits the ground after bouncing a second time. Okay, so I'm going to... Um, it says the speed of the okay so basically what we have here let's look at um between these two points between zero and one what's happening between zero and one let's write down what we know i'm going to write down suvat okay so there's a few things that you have to take into account here uh one of the things you got to take into account is um i always like to think about the direction now between zero and one it's 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 been released okay so its initial movement between zero and one is down so I'm going to take down as positive because that's it. the initial movement is downwards. So if I take down as positive, then S is going to be 40, positive 40, because it's 40 meters down. Okay, and U is zero because it's released from rest. Okay, so U is zero. V, we don't know. Okay, we don't know what V is, the, the speed with which it hits the ground. Now, some people say, oh, the speed is going to be zero. No. The speed with which it hits the ground means the speed just before it hits the ground. At the instant when it hits the ground, okay, it's then may, it's going to change, you know, it's going to become zero for an instant before it, it, it then uh, gets, gets the speed going upwards of half of the speed with which it hit the ground in this question here. Okay, so basically um, the speed when it, which, with it hits the ground, we don't know, but I think we'll need to find that, especially for the next part. So that's something we're going to have to find. The acceleration, now as I'm taking down as positive, acceleration due to gravity is acting downwards. So I'm going to take that as 9.8, okay, as a, as a positive, because we're taking down as positive in this situation. And the time, we don't know, we have to find. So there's two things we have to find here, really. I mean, the thing we have to find, um, kind of like, according to the, the question, is the time. So we could find the time directly by using um, one of the equations of motion. Okay, we have S. We have u, we have a, and we want to find t. So we could use s equals ut plus a half a t squared. Okay. Um, we could alternatively find what v is using v squared equals u squared plus 2as and then use that to find the time because we're going to need to know what v is because we got to find the speed of this particle after it bounces because we're only dealing right now with the first part of the situation. Um, just before it hits the ground the point the time it takes for it to hit the ground basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this formula to find the time and I'll show you how to use uh, v equals u plus a t then to find the v we can we can do it in two steps either this or that no problem so let's find the let's find the time first using this so you have 40 equals 0 plus a half times a which is 9.8 times t squared so we can say t squared is equal to 80 divided by 9.8, okay, um, which gives us, so we have the square root of 80 divided by 9.8, which gives us 20 over 7, 20 over 7 seconds. I'll leave it like that now because it's not our final answer. 
Um, okay, so that's 20 over 7 seconds. That's the time that it takes to hit the ground. Okay, now, what I need to know for the second part is I need to know the speed with which it starts or bounces. To know that, I need to know the speed with which it hit the ground because the speed with which it bounces is going to be 50% less than the speed with which it hit the ground. Okay, so what is the speed with which it hit the ground? Well, we can use V equals U plus AT. Okay, in which case you're going to have, uh, you know what V is, uh, we know what U is, zero, we know what A is, we know what T is now. So we could use this, so V is equal to zero plus 9.8 times 20 over 7. Okay, so we just take the 20 over 7, multiply it by 9.8, and that gives us 28. So that's 28 meters per second. Okay, that's the speed with which it hits um, the ground. Okay, so basically the second situation is it's going to now it's going to, it's hit the ground that's a f the beginning all right so it's hit the ground going at 28 meters per second and then it's bounced up again with a speed of 14 meters per second okay because after it hits the ground after it hits the ground its speed is reduced by a half so it's 14 meters per second the the speed with it, which it takes off again so we got to find the time between it leaving 14 meters per second the, off the ground and then it hits the ground again of course when it hits the ground it's going to be going also 14 meters per second but in the opposite direction okay so if i look at between one and two now between the situations one and two okay if i go between one and two and let's look at what we have suvat again we don't know S. Well, S is zero, basically. The displacement will be zero. Uh, U is going to be 14. Now, I'm going to take up as positive. I'm going to take up as positive in this case. Why? Because its initial movement after it's bounced is upwards. Okay, that's the way I like to deal with things. Okay, you don't have to follow that way, but that's what I like. So that means the final velocity is going to be negative 14, as it's going to be going downwards. And A is going to be negative 9.8 this time, because I'm taking up as positive. And the acceleration due to gravity, G, is always acting downwards. And T, I have to find what T is. Okay, so I have all of these bits of information. So most probably the easiest for me to use is V equals U plus AT. Okay, I could have also used um, S, um, S equals UT plus a half AT squared. I could have used that if I wanted to, and I would have got the same answer. Because I have all those bits of information. But I know that the velocity with which it hits the ground is going to be e equal to the velocity with which it leaves the ground. Okay, and it's going to be in the opposite direction. Okay, so I could use V equals U plus AT. So you have minus 14 equals 14 plus minus 9.8 times T. So you see you're going to have negative 28 over negative 9.8, which gives us again 20 over 7. Same answer. Okay, so therefore, therefore, the total time, let's call this time 2, and this is time 1. This is the time uh, for the first bounce. This is the time where it hits the ground first, and that's the time when it hits the ground second. Okay, so time 2, which is the total time, is going to be time 1 plus time 2, which is 20 over 7 plus 20 over 7, which is 40 over 7 seconds. And that's the answer to this question. So let's let's take 20 over 7, uh, 40 over 7, sorry. And as a decimal, that's going to be 5.71 to 3SF. So that means the time is equal to 5.71 seconds. You can leave it as 5.7 to 2SF. You can leave it at 5.71 seconds. You can leave it as 40 over 7 seconds. All of those would be acceptable answers for this question. Okay, so there's your answer for part A. Um, as I said, I could have also used here S equals UT plus a half AT squared because I know the displacement between 1 and 2 is 0. It's the same level. Okay, The displacement is how far away it is. Remember, this is vertical. I've just drawn it like this just to show some difference. But it's actually vertical going up and down. It's going to be exactly the same place in, in, you know, in terms of uh, where it was vertically as well. Same place. So we could have used S equals UT plus a half AT squared. If you weren't sure what V would be, I, I know that V is going to be the same um, the same as it was in the beginning because they're the same level. But supposing it said, for example, find the time it took to get to a certain height 
you know, above where it was, then you'd have to use this and you'd use the S as that displacement. Okay, the displacement from its initial position. So this is a good formula also to use in certain situations like this. And I'll show that it gives you the same answer because we're going to have S equals zero because it's going back to the same level. U is equal to 14. T we have to find plus a half times, and as I said, I'm going to take um, uppers positives of minus 9.8 times T squared. So we see we're going to get um, a quadratic equation here, which is going to be 0 equals 14t, and that's going to be um, minus 4.9 times t squared. We can take t as common, so you have 14 minus 4.9t. So we have t equals 0, which makes sense, the time when it first left the ground. That's when it was at that level. And also we're going to have t is equal to, if we rearrange this, it's going to be 14 over 4.9 okay so 14 over 4.9 gives us 20 over 7 exactly the same as we got here 20 over 7 for the second time so you see it doesn't matter which of the formula you use you're going to get the answer um, that you require okay, I just wanted to show that as a side point so there we have the answer for question number two part a Okay, so now let's go to part B. It says, find the maximum height reached by the ball above the ground after the ball's third bounce. Okay, so let's have a look. So we got it leaving the ground, hitting the ground. Okay, it hits the ground at 28 meters per second. Okay, so that's like the first bounce. And then it leaves that gra the, the ground at 14 meters per second. Then it hits the ground at 14 meters per second. Okay, let me try and write a bit neater. Let me just make this a bit wider so that it's clearer. So that's the first bounce. The second bounce, so it leaves at 14 meters per second. And it hits the ground, of course, at 14 meters per second. And then from the second bounce, it leaves the ground at seven meters per second because it's halved. It hits the ground at 7 meters per second. And from the third bounce, it leaves the ground at 3.5 meters per second. So now we want to find the maximum height reached by the ball above the ground after the ball's third bounce. Okay, so for the third, after the third bounce, let's have a look at Suvat here. We have to find S. We want to find the height that it reaches. Its initial velocity is 3.5 meters per second. I'm going to take up as positive as... In the beginning of this section, it's, it's of course, it's moving up after it's bounced. V, now, it reaches the top of its flight when the velocity becomes zero for an instant. Because it's, it's going to become, it's going, it's going to slow down, it's going to become zero, then it's going to start falling again, and then it's going to be going downwards. The acceleration, again, is an minus 9.8, because I'm taking down as, up as positive, so down is going to be negative. And we have to find, well, we don't know what T is. Uh, I don't think we need t because we see we can use v squared equals u squared plus 2as. The only thing we need to find is s. And we know what v is, it's 0. We know what u is, it's 3.5 squared. Um, and we know what a, a is, it's minus 9.8. Okay, so we have 3.5 squared. So we'll end up with um, basically... On this side, you've got 2 times 9.8. 2 times 9.8, which is going to be 19.6. And so you end up with 19.6 um, times S equals 3.5 squared. So S is going to be 3.5 squared over 19.6, which gives us, so we have 3.5 squared divided by 19.6 which gives us 5 over 8 which is 0 0.625 meters so that's the height that it reaches above the ground after the ball's third bounce okay so it hits the ground first at 28 meters per second that that speed is halved it hits the ground again 14 meters per second that speed is halved it hits the ground again 7 meters per second that speed is halved so it leaves the ground at 3.5 meters per second after the third bounce, and it reaches its, 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 its maximum height after the third bounce when the velocity becomes zero for an instant, and that's how we can find what that 
distance or that displacement is, which is the maximum height that it's reached. So there's the answer to that question. Number two from October 2019. I hope that was clear. Uh, thank you for watching. Other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist, which should appear somewhere in this section over here. Um, other questions which are to do with this topic of kinematics, you can find in this playlist that should appear in this area. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link and you'll find a link to a different paper which has got some um, M1 questions in it um, on the top, on the card that appears at the top of the page. Thank you for watching and see you soon.